if you want to see how this has actually been done. I've made a video which shows how you build up this assembly to generate this virtual domain. And the second one talks about how to actually apply uniaxial deformation. And the third video was focused on how to apply pure shear deformation on the model. For this video, we want to focus on how to analyze the simulation results as well as generate stress strength data. So let's look at the result. And the first one we're looking at here is the uniaxial X deformation. And what we see here is the one mid stress so if i animate this so you could see what's happening here so essentially the fibers here that are in the main loading direction which is this 90 degree fibers are taking most of the loading and compared to the other ones so if you switch this to plastic strain it does sort of gives you really a better picture of what is going on here so clearly the fibers here are taking most of the loading and these fibers are in compression so however they are quite very strong fibers and so they are not resisting a lot of the compressive loading and so you see stretching of the matrix around it as can be seen you know both on this direction and that other direction so with the wire axis direction so essentially what you see here is that the loading is applied in the vertical direction pulling it upwards and so if we animate the system then it sort of shows us what we we'll expect here so remember the base is held the back end is held and the other end is held so that means the system is only free to move on this inside plane. And that's what sort of what we see here. So you see quite a lot of stress concentration towards the back end that is rigid as the system is contracting. And then you get quite a lot of plasticity around that domain. So if we switch it to the plastic deformation to see a better picture, then you get a similar kind of response as we talked about. So just like in the uniaxial X direction, so you see there's quite a lot of straining of the matrix because these fibers are so rigid that they're not they're refusing to, to deform. And and that's what you see both in this direction and that direction. However, in this in this part of loading, the main uh, load bearing is really the matrix because the fibers are actually not contributing a lot. Except maybe if you think about these ones as they're beginning to contract, they will provide a bit of strength. So it would be greater, the strength would be traditionally greater than the strength of the matrix. The matrix in this case has a strength of 40 megapascal. However, because of the fibers that are oriented in this way, the strength will be slightly higher. However, it will not be as high as the strength of the individual fiber itself because this is really an, a matrix deformation uh, in this sort of way axis loading so the z-axis loading is similar to the x-axis loading so what you see here is again the main fibers are bearing all the load so we have quite a lot of fiber as uh, loading on that and then the ones that are in the off-axis direction which are the 90 degree directions are not seeing a lot of load so again if we animate the system you you see what i'm what i mean so a lot of the stress is really being distributed or being you know supported by this longitudinal fibers that are in the main loading direction similar to what we see with the x-axis deformation. So if we then look at the plastic deformation, again, you see similar things, that features that we've seen before, with a bit of the metric seeing quite a lot of deformation due to the contraction effect. And in this case, it's, it's the main longitudinal direction because it's the direction that has the 140 micron in length. So the next thing we're going to look at is actually what are the data that you extract from, from this. All right, so for us to get the stress strain data. So first thing we're going to do is I will go to the history output, we have already asked it to extract certain history output for us. So for this uniaxial xx direction, there's a reaction force in the one direction and displacement in the one direction, which is the x-axis direction. So we're going to plot those two. So when we plot, obviously, it gives us the data. So remember, this is the fiber that direction that is dominated by the behavior of the fiber. So I would not expect any um, plastic deformation. So it would essentially be a linear elastic deformation, both in terms of the stress history and also the displacement. And that's what we see here. So what we're going to then do is we go to the plugin under tools. So um, Excel utility. So we're going to take this data and bring it into Excel. So if I say, okay, for the current plot, I want to explore, export it into Excel. And then this is the data that we're going to get. So the first line is time. This is RF1. This is also time. So I'm going to delete this time. And then this is the displacement. So we just get those three data. So I'll copy it. And I've already prepared an Excel reference that we're going to use. So if I just paste that data here, so that's the information that we have. From there, we calculate our strain and also calculate our stress. So how do we calculate our strain? So if we study what is here, so the strain is basically the displacement in that one direction divided by the width. So obviously the width of the system, which is the direction that is parallel to the strain direction, so which is 100. 
and then so that gives us the strain and in terms of the stress the stress will essentially be the force in that one direction divided by the cross-sectional area in the x-axis and if you look here i've already shown how to calculate the area in the x plane or the x outward normal plane and that's basically multiplication of the length and the height of the system so that's what we see here so and with that information we can then get that the only things are divided by the one million because i want to display my result in terms of megapascal so once we generate that and apply it across the system we get our data and then for plot the result the other thing that we needed to pick out for is basically the young's modulus and the young's modulus is calculated basically the slope in the linear elastic region which is the stress three point so that's what our young modulus is and the strength is the absolute maximum of the y-axis stress so which is what you get here as 1300 megapascal clearly this system hasn't failed so you continue to scale load until the fiber fails so this strain is quite quite high so that we would have the system will actually fail before that maybe due to in due to the metrics failing before you get to this sort of loading but that's an example of what we're going to see with because we know that a lot of failure to happen and then if you do the same thing in terms of the strain obviously the fracture strain will be the strain that corresponds to that point which is essentially the maximum strain on the system which is 10 percent so with that we get a picture of what the stress strain data in the system will look like so let's go ahead and look at what will happen in z-axis so if we switch again to the z-axis and look at the deformation so the same sort of things will apply we'll expect that you get a similar deformation with the system being loaded in this direction so the fiber behavior will dominate the response and then less of the in-plane or transverse behavior on the system so let's look at that so again our history output will look at this time we're plotting the reaction force in the z and the displacement in the z so we plot that so we get similar data as we have before so we can then go plug in tools extra utility just get the data like we did before so that's the data so i'm going to take out this time value because the time is not necessary so i'll copy that data so that's my excel template so i'll just paste it in that environment and then we get sort of the result that we had before everything looks correct so again our strain is calculated our stress is calculated similarly and then you get a value of strain of young's modulus of this and 1300 and all that so let's look at then the y-axis behavior so this is the uniaxial y-axis deformation so we'll follow the same process as that and we'll show what you get in the y-axis and this is sort of the result that you get in the y-axis so we get a normal uh, three values and then this is the strain and this is the stress and we we'll plot the graph and you get this data okay so ion modulus is basically if you look at what we have as ion modulus ion modulus is the this the, in the initial point you know somewhere around here the initial set of data would both from our young's modulus which which makes sort of makes sense and then the ultimate tensile strength is basically the absolute maximum value in the system which is this value of 405 megapascal and then the stre factual strain is basically the strain that corresponds to that again the maximum strain in the model 0 0.07 so what is a little bit interesting here is the yield stress because I thought because the system is not yielding clearly there's no clear yield point so it makes sense to extract the yield stress and one of the possibilities for a plastically deforming system like this is to use the 5% offset rule so this is zero this is 5% of a strain is probably somewhere around here so I'll get this loop to be equal the same slope as that line and find where intersect the system so intersect it somewhere around there and then we read off that value is 80 megapascal on this axis and it's probably 0 0.025 in strain so that's how we got this value of 80 megapascal as the yield stress of the system which is different from the ultimate tensile strength of the system and this is really important because the system is undergoing plastic deformation in the y-axis so we can report this value as the yield stress remember this system has got this, the yield stress of, of the polypropylene as 40 megapascal. So clearly the introduction of these fibers in the X and Y direction, in the bi-directional sense, has amplified this off-axis stress up to double the yield stress of the of the polymer. And that's about 80 megapascal. And so with that. So obviously the next thing is to compare all those three set of data. So if we put all the three set of data, this is sort of what you see. So you get the normal X and Z value being there. And then of course the Y, which is the out of 
plane direction, you know, the y-axis where the fibers are not necessarily contributing that much. If you look at the actual number that's associated with the system, so the Young's modulus for the x and z direction are approximately exactly the same, so 14 megapascal. So they are both on top of each other, which, which is good because it tells you, you know, that the in-plane behavior of a bidirectional composite as expected is coming up accurately in the right way. Of course, the out-of-plane value will be much weaker, and that's sort of what we're seeing here as 4.12. Um, megapascal and essentially the presence of the bidirectional layer of the system is causing this enhancement in tensile strength we have the same tensile strength in the x and y at the x and z value the in-plane directions and a smaller tensile strength you know 10 percent of the tensile strength in the y of axis direction of course the yield stress has also been noted and we can also look at the fracture strain we can't really make much of the fracture strain because this is really corresponding to what happens when the system stopped running so if we keep loading the system those values we keep going on so if you're really interested in seeing how this system can also be applied for a shear deformation then look at this video if you just again wanted to see how i set up this bi-directional uh, representative volume element then this is the video for you to look at thank you for your interest in this video and in this channel i'll see you in the next bye bye